you know what? I have a million things that I should be doing, and I'm not even confident that I have the storage space on my computer to be able to finish this, but uh, let's make a mock-up. You know what? I'm tired of talking at cameras, so I'm just going to jump into it this time. So I am exactly one inch too big for the size 20, um, but I'm a squishy size 20, so I'm going to cut it out on size 20 either way. And a quick little time-saving tip for y'all is that instead of like taking a whole bunch of time to properly and, and like accurately cut out all of your tissue pieces, just kind of roughly cut them out, and then when you pin them to your fabric, you're going to cut it out like on the line. I think that's actually how a lot of like vintage patterns wanted you to do it. They have like two really thin lines and they told you to cut right between them. So that's what I'm going to do and uh, I'll get everything cut out. Now this pattern does have duplicates of some pieces. So like just from what I'm telling, like uh, piece four, piece one, piece five, um, and they are not all divided up equally across all of the pieces. So like some pieces are so some pieces are like 20, 22, and 24. Um, I've seen one that was like in, what is it, a 16, a 20, and a, and a 24. Like, just be careful and make sure you're cutting out the correct pieces that you need. Also, I'm just going to skip over the belt because, to be completely honest, I I don't like self-belts, and um, it's a rectangle. So just real quick to show you, this is 44 inch muslin. I don't know if you can see this line right here. This is the, um, the short sleeve cut line. So you're going to be able to cut two of these short sleeves at once. So you're cut two, you're going to be able to do that on the fold. Um, but if you're doing the long sleeve version, you're going to have to fold it open. Um, I think because I apparently love to suffer, I'm actually going to do one short sleeve and one long sleeve. So I'm going to cut this like it's a long sleeve, but then for one side, I'm just going to cut it short. Also over here on piece eight, this is the first time that I've seen, at least on a commercial pattern, the fold line be on the line with all the gradations. So that's pretty interesting. So just instead of lining it on the one fold line, just line up your size on the fold. This piece, piece four, is also a little confusing um, because it has the stitching line as well as the cutting line marked. Um, so just make sure that you are cutting on this cutting line, which is going to be these solid lines, and you are not cutting on these dotted lines, which are going to be the stitching lines. Because this is one of those put on the fold pieces, so if you happen to start from this side, just kind of make sure you're cutting on the right side, or I guess on the left. Okay, wait, this appears to be even more confusing because it looks like that 24 is the solid line. 22 has a small, very small, almost solid dotted line, and then 20 has this thick dotted line, and then all the stitching lines are these thin dotting lines. Um, so that can get a little bit confusing. So if you're cutting out piece number four, I'd recommend starting on this side and just follow the line, and I think that might be your best bet. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So they're assuming that you're doing contrast for view A and then self fabric for view B. And that's why you need the same amount of fabric for, or that's why you need the same amount of main fabric for the B dress as you do for the A dress because you need that little bit of extra room. Maybe? I, how does that make sense? You know, I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to cut stuff out. I'm just going to pretend that that is contrast because we're going to pretend that uh, we want contrasting everything. All right, so it finally took me until piece three to find any information about the ease. And it's telling me that the total ease above body measurement is about half an inch, uh, which is abysmally small because I'm used to simplicity ease being like four or five inches. So if I would have known that, I would have cut everything else out probably on a 22 instead of a size 20. But then I came back over back to the pattern envelope. Um, and if we look at, here it is, the finished garment measurements for size 20. It says the bust is supposed to be 44 inches. But if we come back up to the size chart, uh, it recommends a size 20 for a bust of 42, uh, which would make me think that this would have two inches of ease. So I don't know if it just has more ease in the bust uh, than it does at the waist. I don't quite know what's up with that. Also, if any pattern companies are watching, can we please start putting ease information on the pattern envelope? It would just make things so much easier, especially for people who are kind of in between and right in the middle of these sizes. So somebody who may be a size like you know, 14 to 18, it'll help them pick out which pattern that they need. Um, so yeah, if we could start a movement to get ease listed on the uh, pattern envelope somewhere, that would be super helpful. All right, so looking closer, it appears that up here, 
um, at the bust line, it says the total ease is about two and a half inches. So there is a two and a half inch ease at the bust, about a half an inch ease at the waist. And I have found absolutely no information on any of the skirt pieces. So who knows what the hips are going to do. Now what I've done here, this is not proper sewing technique, but if you are working with a fabric that has no printed pattern on it, if it has no stretch to it, and if it has no sheen to it, so, you know, if you're working with a solid color quilting cotton, cutting things out on the straight grain and cutting things out on the cross grain are very, very similar. Similar enough that if you didn't want to waste a little bit more material cutting things out this way and like moving that up there, you could, as long as you make sure that everything is completely perpendicular, you can cut it on the cross grain. Again, this is not completely correct, and um, I'm sure there are people who are going to get very mad at me for even suggesting this, but honestly, woven fabric, it's a grid. It's a grid system, you make it on a grid. You rotate the grid, you still get a grid. So this is one of my little tricks that I like to do just to kind of save a little bit of fabric, because um, otherwise I'd have this giant scrap that it's honestly really big and I otherwise wouldn't be able to do anything with, so I'm just going to turn this piece perpendicular and cut it out from there. So if your fabric has a pattern that doesn't have an up and a down, um, so what I did here was I opened up my fabric and then I folded it in half the other way and I cut out four yards instead of the three and seven eighths, which honestly, if a pattern calls for three and seven eighths, just round it up to four and I can almost just barely cut everything out. Uh, I need one more piece of piece 15. And this is also me cutting everything out of one four yard piece. Um, and that's me cutting out both everything I need for A and everything I need for B. Because I'm going to do one sleeve A and one sleeve B. Because once I move that over, I don't think I'm going to quite have enough room to squeeze another one of those in. But you know what? We'll see. We'll see what happens. So on piece one, Size 20 has a different dashed line than it does for all of the other pattern pieces. Um, Cause on all the other pattern pieces, size 20 is this long dash. Um, and on this one particular piece, it's this long dash with two short ones. So just, you know, be mindful because I almost cut this size out on a uh, size 16. All right, I have all of my pieces cut out and I have all of my markings marked. I have a kitty cat keeping me company and telling me that it is way past my bedtime. And I have an appointment for a tetanus shot in six hours because I stepped on my pin tomato and stabbed myself in the foot. Um, so <laughs> let's just keep going, why not? Um, so now let's find out what the first step is. I'm gonna take a wild guess and assume it's darts on the bodice. Um, yep. Just step one, make darts in lower front bodice. There's also a whole bunch of information about bound buttonholes, which makes me think that they want you to do bound buttonholes, or um, from what I can tell, I think that was the original vintage instructions was to make bound buttonholes. So if you're looking for a project that's gonna force you to make these so that you can get better at them and practice them, this would be a really good project because there's a lot of them, which I will also say, um, because I was noticing that a couple of the recommended fabrics are things like linen, lightweight wool, um, I will say just from personal experience, if you're working with something that has kind of a loose weave, like a loose weave linen, or basically anything that's not like a super tight weave, I would not recommend bound buttonholes, because when you get into those really tiny little bits, it's not fun <laughs> at all, and 9 out of 10 times it's not worth it. So either make your bound buttonholes out of a similarly colored, um, much more tightly woven fabric, or just do them by machine. Honestly, do them by machine. Uh, this thing says that you can do them by machine, and I've had vintage patterns from the 50s and 60s that say you can either do bound buttonholes or machine worked buttonholes. Alright, so I'm going to get my bodice darts done. Alright, so I have my darts stitched. I also went ahead and did my stay stitching on the bottom edge of the bodice. Now the instructions tell you to press open the darts, but they don't really tell you how to do that. So if you're not familiar, this is the way that I like to do it, and this is the way that I've seen. Um, so basically what's going to happen is it's we're not really going to be able to get in this super like pointy area of the dart with our iron and be able to press that open. Um, you need to like get your fingers in there and that's just not safe. So what you're going to do is you're going to look about an inch, about an inch and a half down your dart. Basically you're just going to adjust and kind of pick where you think you may not be able to lay it flat. You're going to cut in very close to that seam. You're going to be very careful to not clip through the seam that you just sewed. 
And now you're going to take your scissors and clip all the way down the center of that dart until you get here. Or, you know, as far as your scissors will go is also usually a good uh, place to stop. So now when I take this to my iron and I press it, I'm going to press this section flat. It might go to one side. Ideally, it would kind of pop open and flatten out like that and kind of make a triangle. Um, might not happen. That is okay. But this section that's a little bit bigger, we're going to press this open and that's going to give us a nice flat seam. We see this a lot in vintage garments uh, more than we see it in modern garments because it does leave a little bit of a raw edge, um, which if you're worried, you can just fray check it. Not sponsored, but fray check. If you want to sponsor me, I am listening. So I'm going to do that and get this ironed. Also, if you didn't want to bother with snipping it open and if you wanted to just press it to one direction, um, a really easy way to figure out which direction it's meant to be pressed in um, is to just kind of move this flat back and forth and whichever kind of lines up most evenly with the edge of the garment is the direction that it was meant to be pressed in. So in this case these darts were kind of designed to be pressed towards the bottom. Most bus darts are meant to be pressed downwards towards the waistband. Not always, but most of them are. All right, so my bodice is done and cooling. So now the next step is to work on piece four, which is this uh, facing piece for the bodice. So the instructions tell you to edge finish, which is just kind of a nice way to finish this. If you happen to own a serger, honestly, you could just run it through a serger real quick. The way that the instructions tell you to do it is to stitch a quarter inch away from this line, then take it to your iron and turn it up to the wrong side. So this is the wrong side and turn it up and press it. And then they want you to either zigzag or surge or you know overcast stitch this or something. So just for the sake of practice, I will go ahead and do that. So I'll just be stitching a quarter inch away from this edge all the way down. Then I'll take it to my iron, turn it over and press it. So if this was a proper garment, the next step would be to kind of open this back up and run a zigzag stitch along the edge of this to stop it from fraying. I'm not going to worry about that because this is a mock-up. So now the next step is to attach the facing to this bodice piece that we were just working on. So we're going to right sides together, put these two pieces together, and we're going to sew after we match everything up, you know, and we're going to sew from, there's a dot or a small circle over here. So we're going to match up this circle. We're going to sew here. We're going to leave our needle in and pivot, come down here, put our needle in, pivot, come across, pivot, come up here pivot, and then come all the way to this edge over here. And here's what that looks like when it's done. So now I'm going to clip all of my corners so that when I turn them out, I can get nice, neat corners. And here's what that looks like when it's finished. For these kind of outer ones, I like to go straight across and then shave off a little bit. And then for these inner ones, I like to snip straight in and then also shave off a little bit. So now I'm going to take this back to the iron and press this right side out and turn everything out and give it a really good press. Pro tip, I like to recycle old like cheese containers and pickle jars and stuff and I like to keep one on my desk to put little like bits and pieces of stuff in. And also that way in case I like break a machine needle or something, I can put it in here so that way I'm not throwing away needles into the trash bag. Anywho, so here is what that looks like when it is nice and pressed. So here is the underside and here is the front. Now, the instructions don't say anything about understitching. Personally, I would understitch this. At the very least, I would at least understitch this section right here. And if you're not familiar, what that means is you would open this back up and you would stitch the seam allowance to this facing piece, and it would kind of encourage everything to stay um, tucked away. And it would also prevent, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see, but this is the right side. So you see how you can actually see this seam how when it got pressed it didn't kind of roll over to the background nicely. Understitching prevents that. So personally I would understitch. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't tell you to. I'm going to keep my eye open to see um, if there's a reason why they didn't, but we'll see. Anyway, the next step is to baste these edges together. So we're going to baste here and we're going to baste here. 
All right, so the next step is to edge finish. This is piece number two. This is one of the facing pieces. So exactly the same thing that we did earlier where we stitched a quarter inch away and then we took it to the iron and folded it over. And if you were doing this for real, you would zigzag or overlock this stitch. All right, so the next step is to take these pieces that we just ironed and match them up to their corresponding sides underneath the buttonholes on piece one. So if you're gonna do buttonholes, now is when you're gonna do buttonholes. I'm not gonna bother because this is a mock-up and I can just pin things where they need to be. But the instructions say to match up all your dots and to match up all of your uh, notches, but these notches don't match up. So I'm thinking, hmm, did I cut that out wrong? So I pulled the original pattern pieces back out and nope, the, uh, the notches here just do not match up. The dots match up just about perfectly, uh, but the notches, do not, so disregard the notches and go off of the dots. And here is what that looks like when it is seamed together. So now we're just going to press this open and we're gonna make sure that the seam allowance on the back side is pressed towards the facing. So it's gonna be pressed towards the small piece and not towards the big one. Personally, I would recommend clipping this curve in this seam allowance before you pressed it. I'm not quite sure why the instructions didn't tell you to do that, but that's their prerogative. Okay, so this next part is a little confusing, but I think I have it figured out, which by the way, pro tip, if you're having trouble kind of visualizing what the next step would be, and if you're not quite sure if you have everything pinned together right, if you run a line of pins along where that stitch line should be, that will kind of tack everything in place so that you can move things around, you can look at it, you can move a couple of steps ahead and flip things around, and you can see if things make sense and if this seems to work. So. What we're gonna do, so this is that lower bodice piece. This is piece number three right here. So I'm gonna take piece one, which is what we were just working on, and I'm gonna place this right side up and I'm going to make sure that this piece is extended outward. So we're not tucking this under, we're putting this outward. So also just a side note from what I would personally recommend from doing a whole lot of sewing is I would recommend clipping the curves of the seam allowance. I would also recommend understitching this, but that's just, that's just me personally. The directions do not call for that. I'm not quite sure why, but maybe it just wasn't called for in the, I don't know. Anyway, so now that we have this extended, we're going to take this section so here's that like facing section and we're going to line up the notches so the notches are the key and we're going to pin and the trick here is we're only going to start sewing at this small dot so there's a small dot here and then there's a small dot that matches on this piece we are only going to sew from the end from this edge to that small dot we have to stop at that small dot so let me get that pinned real quick so here's what that looks like pinned. Now we wanna make sure that this piece, this underneath piece matches up to this top piece. So I'm gonna stick a pin in there just to make sure that it matches up. We're not gonna sew there, but we wanna make sure that it matches. It's very important for the next step. So I'm going to get that sewn real quick. All right, so here we have what we're looking at. Okay, this is the line that we just sewed. We just sewed this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this facing piece, so the shorter one that's on the curved edge on that underneath piece, this is now going to get flipped under. So we're going to turn that the way that it's supposed to look. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have to do a little, a little maneuvering here. So we're turning this facing piece to the inside. Now this kind of corner piece, this is going to get folded over, matched up to the facing like this. So we're matching up this edge with this straight edge. And this piece is going to get hand tacked to the facing piece. Uh, let's see, what do the instructions say to do it? I think the instructions really only tell you to do it here and here. If you wanted to go all the way around, you could. Um, I'm going to do this by machine because mock up. So again, on this side, I'm gonna take this pin out. So what we're doing here, all right, so here's what we were just looking at when we were sewing. We're gonna open this up, open this up. We're going to place this facing. We're gonna turn it under the way that it should be and this would turn over and under much nicely or much more nicely if this was, you know, clips, but I didn't write the directions. 
Um, and now we're going to take this piece. It's going to rotate a little bit. All right, we're matching up these flat edges. We're going to pin and sew. We're going to sew this down. So once that is all tacked in, this is what it's going to look like from the outside. Well, a little bit nicer, but that's what we're going for. So the next step is to do the darts and the back seam and the back bodice piece. I think I've decided that I want my left arm to be the short sleeve one and my right arm to be the long sleeve one. So on what is going to be my left arm, I'm going to uh, chop that off so I don't have to worry about doing the darts. And I'm going to kind of put it on myself and like triple check to make sure that I am cutting the correct arm. Because when you're working with stuff like this and you're, you're doing one at a time, you got to remember that what your left arm when you're looking at the guts and your left arm when actually wearing it uh, can get confused. Uh, and I get a lot, I get flip-flopped a lot. So I'm just going to figure that out real quick. Um, make that quick cut for my left arm. And I'm going to get all of that done. I'm also probably going to go ahead and just do the stitching on the tops of the arms and then also underneath the arm with the exception of where this zipper is going to go. Yeah, I'm just gonna knock all that out real quick. All right, so I have my back all attached and done everything, um, but I was just about ready to start pinning the shoulders and this kind of armpit seam. But I did notice that the instructions never actually tell you to press anything after you do all of this business. Um, so like this seam, there's no instructions to press this. Um, I mean, it gets pressed upward and it, it wants to turn upward because of what you did here. Um, but it doesn't expressly tell you to press anything, um, which if you've been sewing for a while and if this is not your first dress, if you've been sewing, um, is something that you would know and is not something that you'd necessarily have to be told. But if you were somebody who's a beginner, um, you wouldn't know that. So I did not press anything because I'm curious to see how it turns out um, to see, because I want to follow these instructions as closely as possible. I feel like that's my job in reviewing patterns. So anyway, I'm going to get this sewn real quick and uh, all that business. So here it is from the back side. So everything is all sewn. The back is attached to the front. They have you clip your curves this time. They don't have you press them, but they have you clip them, which is a step up. They also have you clip to the seam allowance just above um, that stitch line where we started and stopped because of the zipper. Now, a little pro tip that I like to do when I'm working with zippers is I like to baste where the zipper is going to be shut. Uh, and then when I reach the actual stitching, I'll make my stitch smaller and then I'll back tack and reinforce. Um, because usually with zippers, I didn't look to see what kind of zipper they wanted. Um, usually with zippers, you have to press open the seam allowance. You have to press the seam allowance where the zipper would be. So just having this line of stitching makes it easy to get in and press it real quick. And then you can rip it out in like 30 seconds. So now we're going to move on to the collar. Now they talk about that there are ways to make the collar detachable. Uh, that's really interesting. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do that because I feel like in this day and age we don't really do detachable collars that much and I feel like the collar is just such a quintessential part of this dress that we wouldn't necessarily want to detach it. All right so now we're going to work on the collar. So here I have the collar pieces. Uh, so what I am going to do here is I am going to match these up, sew these together along the short edge, this long curve, and then again on the short edge, uh, I'm going to clip my curves, turn everything right side out, give it a press, and then baste this edge shut once it's right side out. All right, so here is that collar piece all turned and pressed and sewn and all that good stuff. So now we're going to attach it to the bodice. So the bodice gets turned right side out because it's just going to be easier to do it from this side. So the instructions have you kind of open up this facing and when we attach the collar we're gonna do it with that facing open now a quick little pro tip when we're attaching the collar and we're attaching all the facing so when we're attaching the collar this side that you see when you're doing you know right sides together but this top edge of the collar is what you're going to see when the garments done because we're going to do a uh, we have a neck facing that we're going to sew here and that's going to kind of fold this inward. So if you have a nicer side and a not so nice side of your collar, you want to make sure that the nice side is out 
because that's what's going to end up out. All right. Yep. So now we're just going to attach the collar. Uh, if we matched everything upright, this end of the collar should come right up to this seam right here, the seam of the facing. So here's that facing. We're going to turn it out. So the important thing here is we're not attaching the collar like this with a facing underneath. We're making sure that we're not catching the facing when we are attaching the collar. Also another quick note, they never tell you to press any of these seams actually attaching the front and the back together. But if we skip down, if you look closely down here, you can kind of see that the shoulder seam is pressed open. I would recommend pressing it open anyway. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out real quick. You know, make sure you press your seams, even if the instructions don't tell you to. All right, so the next step is to take this piece, which is piece six, not to be confused with piece 16. This one is the neck facing, the other is one of the arm facings. So we press this under by a quarter of an inch. Now I imagine we didn't sew this before we pressed it um, like we did earlier because this was cut on the bias. So sewing it might cause it to stretch and then it wouldn't fit properly. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the bodice and we're basically just going to attach this. Um, and we basted the collar to the bodice, which if you sewed it for real, that's okay. It's no big deal. So now we're just going to match this up and we're going to sew this. Now this time we're going to sew for real with a little bit of a smaller stitch. So this is what's going to actually attach the collar to the bodice. And then once we do that, we're going to clip into the curve so that we can get a nice even uh, turn. Do they have you press? They do not tell you to press in between attaching the facing to uh, stitching everything on. I would highly recommend pressing. I would even highly recommend understitching. But again, I did not write these instructions, so I will not be doing that. Uh, and then once we do that, I think we're pretty much done with the bodice for now, but until we get to the sleeves. All right, so here is what the collar looks like. Here's what the facing piece looks like when it's on. I went ahead and clipped everything. So as you're sewing, this is what it looks like. Um, the instructions do say to trim the seam down, but I did notice the instructions never tell you what seam allowance to use for this part because five eighths of an inch just doesn't seem right. Um, it kind of seems a little bit excessive, but I assume that's what they want you to use. So anyway, I'm going to trim this seam down a little bit um, just to keep it a little bit more manageable. And then I'm going to press or I'm not gonna press because the instructions don't tell me to press. Um, I'm gonna finger press. So I'm just gonna use my fingers to kind of hold it in place. Um, and instead of doing this by hand, um, I'm just gonna base this down by machine because it's a mock-up and I don't really care if there's a visible top stitching on the outside. So I'm gonna trim this down uh, and then I'm just gonna pin that and baste it shut. All right, so now we're gonna take a break from the bodice and we're gonna start working on the skirt. So this is piece nine. This is that um, facing piece for the skirt. So what we're going to do now is we're going to edge finish. So that's stitch a quarter inch away from this edge, take it to the iron and press it. And we're gonna do that on both sides. I'm skipping interfacing, I'm skipping buttonholes. And then they don't actually, oh, they do. Okay, they do tell you finally to stitch. I really hate, I don't know why, if I'm just not paying attention, uh, but I really hate how they say like note and then they give you like an unrelated note and then they keep giving you instructions after that, but they don't like start a new line to let you know that you actually need to read that. I don't know. That's just a minor, minor, tiny little thing that annoys me. Not that big deal. I know, but just tiny little things. So I'm going to do that. And then let's see, the other facing pieces did not match up with the notches. Do these notches match up? That's a good question. Let's find out, do these notches match up? They do, okay. So then I am going to match up the notches and sew on this piece. Um, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and get that done. It's pretty much exactly the same thing that we did on the bodice. It's just gonna be on the skirt now. All right, and just to save myself a trip to the iron, I'm also going to edge finish. This is piece number 10. This is the skirt side front. So we're just going to sew a quarter of an inch away from this seam. Um, or this line. So just this one, just straight up and down. We're not going to pivot. So we're just going to do that. And then I'm also going to take that to the iron and press it as well. All right. So here I have everything nice and pressed. Uh, this right here is the center piece, uh, piece number eight with the facing on it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attach the side fronts, right sides together. So this one goes on this side and this one goes on this side. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach these. Uh, it looks like not 
at the very top. It looks like we're going to start sewing at this point. So this is the, the waist of the skirt. This is the hem down here. So it looks like we're going to start sewing here at this 5 eighths of an inch mark. Uh, we're going to sew down. We're going to pivot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my stitch from like a smaller one to a basting stitch. And I'm going to baste straight down all the way. And that's going to be for when we make the vents. Then I'm going to come back make a smaller stitch, make my stitches smaller again, and then come back and sew properly from this point, pivot out and then pivot down. And we're gonna do that on both edges. So it looks like we're not sewing this very top section, but it looks like we are sewing starting from here. All right, so here we have the finished skirt front piece. So now what's gonna happen is everything is going to get pressed towards the center. So this is gonna get pressed towards the center, this is going to get pressed inwards and also this vent piece is going to get pressed towards the center and I'm going to make sure that we get a really nice really good thorough press here because what's going to happen is once all of this is pressed and all of this is neatly arranged we are going to flip this and we're going to stitch exactly along that same seam line you might be able to see it through the muslin but basically where that diagonal line was when we stitch the inside, we're just going to restitch that and we're going to do some top stitching. And then once we have that stitched, we're going to come back with a seam ripper and rip open this seam up to here. And I also went ahead and did all of the stuff for the skirt back because it's just two darts and sew a straight line down the middle. So I'm going to give that a press while I'm at my irons, just save myself a step. Also, after all of this is basted, uh, we're also going to just kind of baste the top of this shut just to hold it shut where it's supposed to be. All right, so here's what the front of the skirt looks like. So I have uh, everything basted up top. I also have these two seam lines down here. I'm going to leave this uh, basted shut until closer to the end when I go to do the hem just to kind of save myself a little trouble, save myself a little hassle. So now the next thing is to attach the back of the skirt to the front of the skirt and we're going to do that at these side seams uh, and we're going to leave that side open for the zipper. Um, does it tell us to press? It does not tell us to press that open. All right, so now the next step is to attach the skirt to the bodice. So you're just gonna match up your center back, your center front, and all your side seams. Uh, they want you to baste it before you stitch it. I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, and then it does tell you to press everything, press the seam down, which is odd because usually you press the seam up. All right, so I think that I have decided that since this is a mock-up, I'm not gonna bother with a zipper and I'm just gonna pin myself in this for any sort of try on So I'm not gonna worry about doing a zipper. So now I'm going to move on to do the cuffs. So it looks pretty much like they're very similar. No, they're not. So it looks like for this one, so for cuff A, which is piece number 13, uh, we're gonna do it very similar to the collar where we're gonna go kind of around um, all one of them turn it right side out and then attach it. And then for this piece, the short sleeve one, the number 15, yeah, for this one, it looks like they want you to do the center seam first before you go around the top. So I'm going to get started on those. I'm going to kind of work on them at the same time. So it looks like this one is supposed to be one continuous cuff and it looks like this one's supposed to have a little bit of a, an overlap and a little bit of a break there. All right, so for this one, which is the short sleeve one, you're going to take two pieces, you're going to sew them together, and then you're going to sew them right sides together and you're going to match up this back seam and you're going to match up this front point and then you're going to go around and stitch all around the top on this edge. All right, so here I have my two cuffs done. So now it's just time to attach them to their respective sleeves. So this pointy one goes on the short sleeve and this long one goes on the long sleeve. Uh, I think I'm not gonna bother to do the facings for these because it's gonna be exactly the same as on the neck. It's basically just finishing this off with bias tape and I really don't think I need to um, like go through that and work that out because it, it should work. The length might be a little odd, but it should work. All right, so this is what it looks like done. It looks like a mess, but what do you expect when you don't press anything and you have no idea what the ease is gonna be, so you cut it out on the wrong size. Um, I went ahead and did the hem by machine. Ideally, you would do it by hand. That makes all of the uh, 
like flabby bits easier. If I make this for real, I'm actually gonna have to lower the waistline, which I genuinely don't remember having to do recently on any of the like plus size patterns. Usually the waist hits me right, but this I'm gonna have to lower the waistline by about a, like a full inch and a half. This is a little odd. This, this puffs out a lot, that is a little odd. Can't tell if I like the looser fit of the sleeve. Uh, I do like the short sleeve. I have a million pins stabbing me, it's not comfortable. But yeah, this barely fits, like I would not be able to eat a big lunch. Although if I did a half inch seam allowance instead of a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'd add like a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. I'd add three quarters of an inch, which is almost a full inch, which would give me a little bit more wiggle room kind of all around. This was time. I'm going to collect my thoughts a little bit. It's uh, almost time for my tetanus shot because I've been going all night. And uh, yeah, I'm going to think about this some more. Is that recording? Please tell me how it's recording. How do I sit in a flattering way? Well, hello again. It has been approximately 12 hours since I began this mock-up journey. Usually for the wrap-ups, I like to wear the mock-ups, but I'm going to be 100% honest. Um, I kind of pulled an all-nighter trying to get this done. Mostly I was just trying to keep myself awake uh, because my sleep schedule is completely messed up and I'm trying to reset it. But as some of you may know, cutting on the floor is less than ergonomic. So my lower back is in excruciating pain and I'm going to be honest, I don't think I have it in me to squeeze into some Spanx right now. I just, I, I genuinely don't think I can do it. So let's talk about this pattern. So first let's talk about some practical tips and tricks uh, that I would like to confer now that I've actually sewn through this once. The very first thing is size up. They are not joking when they say that there is about half an inch of ease in the waist. And I would argue that there is no ease in the hips whatsoever. I did not try to sit down in that dress. Um, don't really ever plan to. <laughs> Unless you are making this out of something that has a little bit of give and a little bit of stretch to it, I would highly recommend you size up. Second piece of advice, all of these buttons, there is absolutely no reason that these need to be functional. So if doing all of those buttonholes kind of intimidates you and you don't want to do it, just sew the buttons where they're supposed to be. It's perfectly fine. I see no logical reason why you would have to unbutton and rebutton any of the buttons on this thing. I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know where the ones on this top piece would even go. I think they just get stitched on top of the buttonholes and then the buttons here on the skirt. The only part that's open is the part with the buttons. So if you're really making this just for fun and you really don't mind the, um, and you don't mind deviating from the pattern a little bit and you wanna save yourself a little bit of trouble, just sew the buttons on where they're supposed to be. You really don't need the buttonholes. All of the pieces did fit together very well. I think it was really only until I got to the end with some of the cuffs that I had to kind of fake things a little bit, but like all the darts lined up where they were supposed to, all of the side seams, all the center front, center backs, all of those lined up exactly where they were supposed to, which is very nice and very refreshing. There were some issues on some of the pattern pieces though. I kind of talked about them as we went through them, but just kind of like double check all of your pattern pieces. Something I like to do when I'm confused on my fabric is I will double check the actual tissue pattern pieces against each other because there was that one incidence where the notches do not line up. So if you ask me if I were to recommend this pattern, when I think about that question, I think about myself about five years ago. I knew how to read patterns. I could follow directions well enough. I was still very much a beginner in all of this sewing nonsense. Even though I took a sewing class in high school and I learned all the basics and some of the technical stuff, and even though I knew that the concept of cutting things out on the grain line was important, um, I didn't personally care enough. So there was a time when I was just cutting things out every which way and, and I was skipping everything. I like never basted, I never stay stitched, never did anything, never understitched. So I think back to that Sam whenever I'm thinking about patterns like this. And I would say, I would not recommend this pattern to past Sam. Because I'm going to be honest, I genuinely don't know if I like how the dress turned out or not. I think I might like it better if I gave it a fighting chance and I actually like clipped the curves, even if the instructions didn't say to do it. Understitching, adding a whole bunch of understitching would just finish this off and add so much more of a professional quality. Pressing your seams, just pressing your seams. The fact that this didn't tell you to press all of your seams kind of leads me to believe that this was marketed towards someone who is a little bit more advanced in their sewing technique. This is definitely an upper level intermediate to an advanced level sewing pattern. I would not say that this is a beginner friendly sewing pattern. 
mostly because in order to make this look good and I think in order to give this a fighting chance there are a lot of little techniques and tips that you really should follow that the instructions just don't say. Which makes me curious because Simplicity has in the past with some of these vintage patterns, they've just reprinted the original vintage instructions. Now usually when they do that, they'll tell you either somewhere on the envelope or somewhere in the instructions that they've included the original vintage instructions. They did not say that anywhere in this pattern and then there were instructions that you could tell were a little bit more modern. Which makes me wonder if they basically just kind of copy and pasted the original instructions and then just kind of annotated where they needed to. Which to me makes a little bit more sense because if they did include the original wording of the 1950s instructions, that was a time when general sewing literacy among the general population was a little bit higher than it is now. Also just kind of on a personal preference, instead of actually cutting out all of the sleeve facings and the neck facings, I feel like you would get a better result if you just made a whole bunch of bias tape out of whatever you're using or used some kind of matching bias tape. I feel like it'll save you the step of actually having to pin down that tiny little strip Personally, I'm kind of at a weird position with this pattern because I feel like if I gave it a fighting chance, I would like it, but I'm not confident that I want to dedicate the materials to giving this a proper fighting chance. Because this is definitely a four yard dress. I would 100% recommend this four yards. But four yards could be a lot of fabric. And for a dress that I'm not confident that I'll like, I don't know if I want to dedicate the materials to it. From what I can tell from all of my pattern sewing Facebook groups is that this pattern is one of the most coveted of this season. People love this. People pick this up. They are so excited for this. So I have full confidence that within the next week or two, somebody is going to post a full sew through, full sew with me, um, a, a beautiful, probably Valentine's themed garment of just everything beautifully tailored and just professionally finished. I have full confidence that that video will exist within the next couple of weeks if someone didn't already beat me to the punch and upload before I put this one up. <laughs> this is also the first time in a very long while that any of these like plus size patterns or just the larger size measurements have been too short waisted for me. I feel like I would have had a little bit of a better fit and a little bit of an easier time trying to get in this dress if the waist was down on my actual waistline and not up on my ribs. And it's been a very long time since I've had that issue so I don't quite know what's going on there. I like the idea of the detachable collar and cuffs and they give you instructions on how to make it detachable, which is a fun little detail and it's definitely how the original came in, but I feel like we don't really do detachable collars nowadays. Also, I completely skipped over the belt, um, but just looking at the belt and just kind of like holding it up to me, I can tell that belt is not gonna be long enough for its corresponding waist measurement. It's just not. <laughs> Gonna be honest, I really didn't take that much of a look in the mirror in this dress because I had so many pins stabbing in me. Speaking of which, I was not kidding earlier when I said that I accidentally stepped on my pin cushion and stabbed myself with a bunch of pins and had to get a tetanus shot. I got my tetanus shot this morning. That's part of the reason why I pulled an all-nighter um, because I knew that if I fell asleep, I just wouldn't wake up in time to go get that done. So I just stayed awake. I made two notes when I was making this. One was... Clipping and pressing instructions are abysmal, um, and no understitching instructions. Oh, also now that I remember, the, uh, the fit of the bust was very weird. It's very clear that this dress was designed to be worn over a girdle, a corselet, a merry widow, um, some form of very 1950s shapewear. Oh, that was a big yawn! I heard that over here. Which does bring up a very interesting question that I'm interested to know people's opinions on. When it comes to reprinting vintage patterns, should we update the measurements to fit modern silhouettes or should we stay true to the original? I'm gonna be honest, I'm kinda on the fence about this pattern. I'm not quite sure if I like it or not. Um, let me know below if you think that I should try to attempt this for real, if I should give this a real shot. Also let me know uh, which arm sleeve you liked the best, if you liked the long sleeve or with the short sleeve better. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative. I hope this was helpful if you were considering working on this pattern. The big takeaway is add all of those professional touches. <laughs> Even if the instructions don't tell you to do it, still do it. Do your understitching. Press everything. Clip all of your curves. Clip all of your corners. Any little thing that you can think of to make this come out a little bit better, go ahead and do it. Also, definitely make a mock-up because this runs so small. <laughs> and with that, I think I will get back to working on things that I should be working on uh, and not procrastinating. So I will see you all in the next one. Bye!
if this shot is wiggly, it's because there's a cat rubbing her face on my tripod. Brat. <laughs>